Hi everyone, welcome to our Laura Alliance technical webinar today. We do want to go ahead and get started on time, so we are going to kick off here right at the hour. Um, we have a great technical webinar for you today. Um, we're talking with some of our members from the technical committee, and they're going to talk about the LoRaWAN standard expands to include relay specification. So just a quick few notes before we get started here, and I hand over to the presenters. Um, just a reminder that there's no dial-in number for the webinar today. So um, all the audio is through your computer. If you're having any technical issues, um, please go ahead and refresh your screen, and that usually solves any issues. There's also a, a bar along the bottom of your screen, and there's a help box there if you do need any further help. The other really important box on your screen is the uh, Q&A box. So throughout the webinar today, type in your questions into that Q&A box, and our presenters will uh, be answering those questions at the end of the webinar. And uh, just a reminder that the webcast will be available on demand within the next 24 hours or so. So I am going to go ahead now and skip over and introduce uh, and let our presenters introduce themselves. So Carlo, please go ahead and take over. Thanks, Megan. So uh, uh, hello, everyone, and thank you um, for taking the time to attend uh, today's, uh, today's webinar about the LoRaWAN uh, uh, additional feature that uh, uh, we want to introduce uh, and called uh, Relay. So I'm Carlo Tinell. I'm product manager, marketing manager for um, Semtech, and uh, uh, especially for LoRa uh, products catalog. I've been with Semtech since uh, three years now, and I'm a big fan of this new feature that we are introducing with the Alliance. Maurice. So, hello everyone, I'm Brice Maitan, I'm a system, I'm an embedded system engineer at Semtech, and I'm also one of the main editors of the Relay specification. Hello. Thanks, Brice. So, uh, let's move on, on the, on the presentation. So, uh, the first part of the presentation will provide you insights on the business rationale that has driven uh, the activity and the definition of the specification itself. So we will see why the alliance converged on the idea that the relay was indeed needed. Uh, what are the main requirements of this relay? Uh, really, what shaped the specification? And what are the use cases that are enabled or will benefit from, from this additional feature? Uh, then Breeze uh, will describe the principle of operation of the relay, addressing the main topics uh, uh, like message forwarding, security, and power consumption. So we will find, uh, finally end the session with a few takeaways and messages uh, for you. Uh, so let's start understanding the problem that we want to solve with, uh, uh, with Relay now. Uh, uh, the, the problem is it's basically a matter of uh, cost. And this is explained on the, on, the, on the left side of the slide. Uh, a problem our ecosystem often finds uh, especially uh, for large network deployments, but not only, is the excessive increase of uh, infrastructure costs when there is a need to ensure coverage for the last 5 or 10% of the sensor population. In most of the cases, this last uh, percentage, uh, which is still very important, uh, uh, is considered by, by, by small cluster of, of devices at the very edge of, of a, a network that sometimes can be already deployed. It's, just, it's not just in the case that we have to deploy a new, new network. Uh, when the only way to bring, uh, um, to bring this coverage is uh, uh, only deploying new gateways, uh, the cost of coverage for sensors uh, may become too high uh, and simply might not make sense. Uh, or for the business case. So it may be too high to be justified uh, for the business case. So uh, to be clear, we are not just talking about the cost of the hardware of the gateway itself. 
uh, a gateway must be find also a power grid and uh, an internet back call. So uh, uh, two quite heavy infrastructure that must be there uh, for the gateway to be to be operational. So really, and these those are additional costs uh, on top of the gateway's um, hardware. So our ecosystem found really the compelling need for a, a low cost network extender uh, with um, uh, reduced uh, uh, infrastructure capex uh, to ensure the coverage uh, at the extreme edge. So that's really the, the main problem that we are solving, lowering the capex, the investment needed to deploy and cover uh, and provide LoRa one network at the very edge of, uh, of our deployments. Now, uh, let's see what are the main high level requirements uh, that drove uh, the definition of the relay specification. First, a relay must be low power and low cost. But what does it really mean, uh, low power and low cost? So low cost for us meant uh, that the hardware architecture of the relay should be equivalent to the one of a standard LoRa one and the device. That's the, let's say, the main statement that stands behind the low cost uh, assessment. For low power, the Alliance envisioned the, uh, a solution uh, capable to be battery powered, and Brice will show you uh, elements for that, and with some uh, fair assumption, still capable to work for several years. So that's what really low power means. Again, we are adding a new device, a new feature there, with the same, let's say, high level um, uh, capabilities or, or specificities of our LoRa one and, and device. Uh, the second main requirement was that the relay must be capable to handle at least 10 LoRa one and devices. So we are envisioning here really uh, small clusters of devices, okay? Uh, third is that from a gateway standpoint, the relay behaves as a standard LoRa one and devices. This really simplifies also the, 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 the deployment of the relay. There is no need to uh, big changes on the infrastructure itself, okay? Uh, fourth uh, requirement is that the relay uh, and the end node that it manages uh, must be secure as a LoRa one and device. Very sensitive topic. And so with the relay, we will keep the security uh, of the LoRa one standard at the same level it's today. And finally, the end devices working under a, a relay uh, should, be, should, should be capable to revert back to traditional LoRa one operation or configuration when they simply realized that uh, they could be covered by a one gateway because ex post, uh, at some point when the population of this cluster grows enough, uh, then we could find reasonable to install a new gateway and maybe reuse the relay for another, let's say, uh, extension uh, farther at the edge. So in, in addition, on the, on the right side, you also can uh, appreciate uh, that mm, we are designing or we are envisioning the relay with a, an operation through a single hop. So relay will, the LoRa one relay, it's not something meant for a, or aimed for a, a, a multi-hop or meshing network, but really single hop extension coverage. But practically, let's see also what are the use cases that could be uh, more, more easily enabled or uh, could take benefit from this protocol extension. So let's work through a collection of them in the next couple of slides. Uh, first, uh, as you can see uh, on the right side, uh, typically uh, Relay would provide an efficient solution to extend the network, uh, network coverage for smart clusters of devices in the periphery uh, um, of a network uh, already deployed or in course of deployment. But another interesting case uh, or will be, or let's say, a uh, set of cases will be where the surrounding environment of the sensor introduces very high insertion losses. So the sensor can be quite close to the gateway, but the environment introduces a high level of insertion losses, which breaks the, 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 the coverage. So this happens, for instance, in very deep indoor scenarios where the, uh, for instance, a meter uh, is put behind the extra thick walls or placed into uh, deep wells, uh, or even generally 
when uh, meters or sensors are deployed underground. Okay, so uh, those are three, let's say, use cases uh, we have seen uh, uh, are requiring this kind of solution. But uh, when we start pitching the idea of a relay to, to the LoRaWAN ecosystem, we quickly also realized that there, there, um, this feature could be a key enabler also for a couple of new emerging use cases. Uh, first, in track and trace uh, platforms, um, especially for logistics, there is a growing need to monitor the load inside a container. Uh, and this must be done through multiple sensors placed into the container itself, and sometimes also in different positions, okay? Now, the metallic container act, acts freely as a, an electric shield, so makes, and it makes very difficult uh, uh, for the wireless signal to uh, be uh, received, uh, let's say, 100 of meters away of the container. So uh, reliably, we can say that uh, uh, the, the signal can be transmitted or received uh, to up to a few tens of meters uh, outside the container. And so as a solution, a relay here, uh, when it's placed uh, uh, on, on the external surface of the container, it could easily collect all the information, sensing information coming from the different sensors inside the, the container, and then uh, retransmit everything to a standard or a one gig. So really, key enabler for this track and trace monitoring use case into logistics. And finally, another very interesting use case uh, uh, enabled by, 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 by this new feature is uh, uh, can be found in the, in the uh, satellite IoT connectivity um, applications. Uh, we have a lot of customers now that are starting to deploy these kind of platforms. And really, with Relay, those kind of platforms, platforms can extend uh, and provide connect, DORA 1 connectivity uh, in remote areas, even when it's required to uh, reach uh, indoor, uh, indoor sensors. So really, with Relay, we can easily expand uh, satellite IoT connectivity indoor uh, for all those uh, application use cases where uh, satellite connectivity can can play a critical role. Uh, let me now pass the stage to to Brice. Uh, uh, he will describe you uh, the principle of operation of the relay protocol. Brice, it's up to you now. So thank you, Carlo. So now let's talk about the technical part about the relay specification. So like Carlo said earlier, one of the key requirements of the relay was to be low power and low cost. So with that in mind, we designed the relay protocol around an end device radio chip to be low cost. And we decided that continuous reception wasn't a valid option for a battery powered device. Instead, we decided to use a feature of the LoRa chip called CAD, which stands for Channel Activity Detect. So this feature allows the radio to check if there is any LoRa modulation ongoing. In order to reduce the power consumption drastically, the array will perform CAD periodically and goes to sleep between two scans. So that's, uh, it will do that if there is no LoRa activity. If there is a LoRa activity detected during one of the CAD, it will switch to reception to receive the incoming frame. And as shown on the figure, the array can be configured to perform CAD on one or two channels. The first, the first channel, also called default channel, is a mandatory channel where frequency and data rate are defined in the regional parameter specification. So basically, we have two sets of configuration, one at SF10 bandwidth 500 for the US and Australia, and the other one at SF9 and bandwidth 125 for the rest of the world. Prior to any connection to the network, so before joining the LoRaWAN network, the end device will use the default channel. It's a little bit like the joint frequency. But a second channel can also be configured by the network server. This channel can be configured to either increase frequency or data, data rate diversity. 
it is completely up to the network server to decide what configuration you want to use. You may want to have a high data rate to match the application need, or you may want to use a different frequency with the same data rate to increase the frequency diversity. So now let's talk about the end device. So like I said, on one side, we have a relay that is doing a periodic CAD, and on the other side, we have an end device that needs to communicate with this relay. Our solution was to create a new frame called Wacon Radio to allow the end device to catch this periodic CAD. Basically, the Wacon Radio frame is a frame with a preamble up to one second. This long preamble is the heart of the warframe and is what allows the end device to wake up the relay. So now we have two kinds of wake-on radio frame. The first one is for the join request, and the other one is for the standard LoRaWAN uplink. The main difference between them is that the one for the uplink is encrypted. The data inside the two warframe are the same, and basically uh, are the frequency and data rate of the LoRa1 uplinks that will need to be forwarded to the network. So let's resume. So once the relay has been waken up by the long preamble, it will switch to RX mode and start to demodulate the incoming packet. In response to this frame, so this is the raw, this is the raw frame we were, we were talking about. In response to this frame, the relay may send an acknowledgement. And then the end device will send its lower one uplink. As stated before, we want the relay to not interfere with the lower one protocol. So this lower one uplink could also be received by a gateway, and the NS could decide to bypass the relay and send a downlink on RX1 or RX2 directly to the end device. But in case where this frame is only received by the relay, we have to create a new reception windows called RxR to allow a dongling to be sent through a relay. RxR is defined. So we will do uh, more on that later. So, as I just said, the relay may reply with a war hack to a war frame. So, the war hack is only set by the relay to the war uplink because only the war uplink is encrypted and secure with the, and uh, secure enough. This frame, so the war hack frame, serves multiple purposes. The first one is obviously to let the end device know that its warframe has been received and understood by the relay. The second one is to inform the end device about the relay whereabout, such as, such, such as his data rate between himself and the network server, the forward capacity, the uh, external accuracy, the real CAD periodicity, the T offset, so T offset is um, how many uh, millisecond of preamble the relay has received and the delay for the relay to switch from CAD to reception mode. So all the latest information will allow the end device to estimate when the relay is scanning the channel and thus reduce the preamble for its next message. If you want to know more about this mechanism to reduce the preamble length, uh, there is a dedicated annex on the specification with some uh, with a calculation and some and, a, and an example. So let's resume. We have an end device that has sent a war frame with a long preamble to wake up the relay. A relay that has received this frame and reply with a war hack. Then 
the end device has sent its LoRaWAN uplink. LoRaWAN uplink that has been received by the relay. So now the relay has the LoRaWAN uplink and need to forward it to the network server. So on top of the uplink, the relay will add some metadata like SNR and RSSI and then send it to the network server on a dedicated F port. Thus, the network server will be able to know that this message is a forwarded message and that it needs to be handled as a relayed message. So it is important to note that the delay between the end of the uplink, so uplink here, and the forwarded message here is fixed to allow the network server to perform some calculation to determine when the end device has really sent the uplink. This is crucial for some application like time synchronization. So now the NS, the network server, has an uplink and knows that it has been forwarded through a relay. So if the network server wants to send a downlink to the end device, it has to send it to the relay either on RX1 or RX2. And then the relay will send it, will send the downlink to the end device on the RXR windows. So the RXR windows is open 18 seconds after the end of the uplink. We choose this value to be, we choose this value to be after the maximum value of RX2, which is 16 seconds. And the frequency and data rate of this windows is a mix of the Wacom radio frame and the LoRaWAN uplink. So now we have done the whole, uh, the complete uh, interaction between the end device from a relay to a network server to a relay to back to a relay and back to the end device. So we have seen every step to, uh, to enable the communication between an end device, a relay, and a network server. Now let's talk about some capabilities of the relay. So in order to control the forwarding ability of the relay, we have added some filtering and forwarding limitation. So by default, a relay will forward every join request, but this behavior could be changed and fine-tuned. We have implemented a filter and forward list based, based on the combination of the joiner UI and the dev UI using the longest prefix match algorithm. The, follow, the following table is an example of what can be done with it, and it should be a, bit, a little bit more explicit. So in this case, we have updated the first the rule zero to filter every join request. So now the relay will filter, will re reject every join request it received. But we have added the rule one to, able to, to allow the relay to only forward the join request from a specific OUI. But we also have added a rule to filter a dedicated, a specific join OUI. And on this specific join UI, we decided that we wanted to authorize a subset of dev UI, except for one, which is defined on the rule four. So it's quite flexible. It, it could uh, allow the network server to manage which end device is or is not allowed to go to join through a relay. And with that, we can control the consumption of the relay and have um, a fixed, uh, let's say, a predictable battery life. About the forwarding, it's also the same thing. So to avoid to drain the battery too, too quickly and have a predictable life estimation, we have added a forward limit. Depending on the type of the message, and reset on an hourly basis. So basically, it means that 
we can configure the relay to forward a number, a fixed number of join requests, uplink, uh, new device detection each hour, and update this the, this limit dynamically. So it means that you can choose to configure your relay to forward a lot of join requests at first and a few uplink, and then once your setup is done, reduce the number of join requests and increase the number of uplink to match your need. So with this kind of flexibility, we think we can accommodate every need. So let's talk about now, let's talk about security. So um, one of the key recommend was to have a relay as secure as an end device. So based on that, we have we decided to create a new key, a new relay session key called root war S key. So this key is derived from the network session key. So this also means that the relay session key are unique for each end device and need to be computed after every join. This key allows uh, from this key. So we, we created, a, let's say, an intermediate key. This key will be need to be transferred to the relay. And the relay will derive the raw S int key, a raw S onc key, to, um, le, le, uh, to check the validity of the MIG and to encrypt and decrypt the Raycon radio payload. So this key was added to limit the cost of transferring the relay, the relay session key to the relay. So we have to transmit, transmit only one key instead of two. Uh, a side note on the, on the key transfer. So it is recommended to only have the relay session key in one relay at a time to avoid multiple acknowledge at the same time coming from different relay. Because if this happens, the end device will not be able to receive a war hack and uh, this will not be able to send its lower one uplink. It is possible to have the relay session key on several relay at the same time, but you need to be sure that they will never be in conflict with each other. Okay, so now let's talk about the battery. As I said in the beginning, the relay protocol has been designed to be low power. So we run some simulation to estimate the battery life and come up with the following charts. So let's assume we have a relay doing a scan every second and managing 10 end device. So with each end device sending 50 bytes every hour and receiving 20 bytes, one per day. We suppose that all communication are done at SF9 bandwidth 125. In this scenario, we could have up to 10 years of battery life if the relay is only configured in one channel and 7.5 years if a second channel is enabled. As you can see on the chart, the main source consumption is the CAD. So even if it's very short, it adds up quickly as it is done every second. So this simulation has been done on a SAFT LS30 uh, on a D-cell battery with a 17 ampere per hour capacity. So it's quite a big cell, but not uh, it's possible to use this kind of cell for a relay. Now let's talk about the battery for the end device. So the cost of using the relay protocol on the end device depends mainly on three factors. The first one is the data rate and payload size that need to be forwarded. The second one is the delay between uplink and the XTAL error of both the end device and the relay. The last two parameters are linked together as they will dictate the preamble length of the Raycon radio frame. The chart on the right uh, shows that energy consumption could be increased by a factor of two to four, depending on the delay between uplink. So as we can see on this 
chart, the, law, the, the consumption is double. And on this chart, it's multiplied by four. The main difference on the, uh, between these two charts is the delay between uplink. And as we can see, the synchronization process, so uh, basically the, the length of the preamble on the Recon radio frame change. It is the only param parameter that change. So uh, if you speak regularly with your relay, let's say one, one, one time per hour or more often, the sync, the sync part will be low as opposed to the lower one uplink. So it is important to note that this chart only covers the consumption of the lower one uplink and not to the and not the whole product. Okay. And uh, I think that's all for me. So Carlo, if you want to end it. Thanks, Bruce. Uh yeah, let's conclude the presentation with uh, uh, four main takeaways. Uh, the first one uh, that I want to highlight is that uh, uh, really Loda One community keeps responding to market demand uh, to further simplify uh, adoption and, and lower, lower cost barriers. And let me let me say that this dynamism is, is, is a key ingredient of the Loda One success in the market. So we are very proud of that. Uh, the second main message that I wanna you live with is uh, is that relay will be low power, low cost, and secure as a lot of one end device. Very important. So we are still striving to keep our main value proposition there, even adding and improving the protocol down the road. Uh, now uh LoRaWAN ecosystem, the whole LoRaWAN ecosystem has an efficient standardized solution to extend the reliability. Uh, uh, the coverage uh, to small cluster of devices at the very edge. And uh, with Relay, satellite connectivity in remote areas become much more affordable also for indoor use cases. So those are the main messages that I wanted to share with you. Uh, once again, thank you for your attention. And I'll uh, hand over to Megan. Great, thank you so much, Carlo. Um, a lot of great but also useful information uh, presented on the webinar today. So thank you to, to both of our presenters. Um, this link that Carlo has um, on that takeaway slide there is also in the resources box on your screen. So if you look at your screen, you'll see a box called resources and you can go ahead and click that link directly from there. Um, there's also a copy of today's slide deck in that same area. So just a reminder, or in case you joined late, we do have plenty of time here for the panelists to answer your questions. So please uh, type in that Q&A box any questions you have for our panelists today, and uh, we'll get to those very shortly. A quick invitation to our uh, in-person event in San Francisco next week. So there is a discount code on your screen as well. If you are able to join us at our LoRaWAN live event in San Francisco next week, we'll have more great technical presentations there um, and we hope you can all join us. So more details, uh, if you click the LoRaWAN live image on your screen, it'll take you directly to that website and you can always reach out to events at laura-alliance.org for more information. So we'll go ahead and move into our Q&A section now. Uh, Elper Yegin, uh, the Vice Chairman of the Laura Alliance and also the Technical Committee Chair and the Vice President of Advanced Technology Development from Actility, will be joining us to moderate the Q&A session so I'm going to go ahead and hand over to Elper uh, to go ahead and begin that Q&A. So submit those questions in that box labeled Q&A on your screen, and uh, we'll get started here.
All right, thanks, uh, Carl and Brief again. So um, my mistake, I was reading my notes for our next webinar on October 27th. Um, so Elper's not joining us today for the Q&A, um, but do join us for our next technical webinar that is on October 27th, and Elper will be moderating the Q&A then. Um, so I, uh, we have a ton of questions that have come in throughout the webinar. So without any further delay, I'm just going to hand over to Carlo to get us started in answering some of those questions. Thanks, Megan. So actually, really main interesting questions. So let's start from the from the first one, Jeff asking, are there uh, currently any any commercial available relay uh, devices? Uh, no. Uh, because we, I mean, the LoRaWAN Alliance just published the, the, the specification, so uh, there is nothing that is commercially available, but I, I easily guess uh, people are working behind the scene, so let's, let's stay tuned, and you, I'm sure um, uh, you will, you know, I mean, you will be um, uh, notified by, by, by things happening for the relay uh, down in the, in the next few months. Um, so the next one is uh, about Andrew, Neil, so relay and, and node is a new class of device. No, uh, it has not been defined as a new class of device in the, the specification. It, it's an add-on, add on, on uh, it could be an add-on on a class A as well. Um, then Kyoshi, how many number of the relay station can be handled in the relay stations? Uh, I mean, so the relay, it's single hop, so we not foresee, I mean, say, relay managing um, beneath additional uh, other relays, okay? So we can, relay will only be capable to manage uh, end nodes uh, to keep to the single hop scheme, okay? Um, uh, Apostoli is asking, is the relay visible by uh, a lot of one network server? Actually, yes. Uh, and actually, uh, the network server must implement also uh, some uh, changes, okay, to uh, integrate uh, uh, the the relay um, compatibility. Do you want to add something to your uh, brace? Uh, no, no. It's that exactly that the LNS will know that this end device is a relay, and it that it will have to manage the frame coming from it differently. Okay, so let's let's go on the next one from Jose Cruz. Uh, will the CAD wake on to any LoRa signal within the relay environments, uh, your or other LoRa networks? I think this has been already answered during the presentation. Uh, there, there are schemes uh, about filtering uh, uh, messages coming from relay that should not be managed. Uh, sorry, from end nodes that should not. Mm, should not be managed by, by the relay itself. And this is really, uh, this has been introduced to uh, preserve security standards, but also to keep uh, power consumption low from the relay. So really, yes, there are schemes that will allow to filter messages and the activity of the relay. Uh, Nick Jones, is the is relay operation available for private LoRa networks? Uh, I would say it's gonna be available for any LoRa one network, okay, provided the, the network server uh, is is enabled with this feature, and the end nodes uh, integrate uh, this add-on on the protocol itself. Um, Nathan asking, I'm completely new to LoRa One, so I don't know, I don't know how to add frames. Can you briefly describe how you added the, the wake on radio frame? Uh, Brice, do you wanna take this? Uh, yes, I'm not sure to understand the question, but. Uh... You just need to send the Wacom radio frame before you send your uplink. So it's a bit more tricky than that, but basically you send the Wacom radio frame, you wait for an acknowledge from the relay, and then you can send the standard LoRa one uplink. Okay, so next. Yeah, did, did you finish? Yeah, no, uh, that's all for me. Yeah. Okay, okay. So let's move to Claudio. Was asking, is there any API ready to use as a part of the stack implementation available? If not, will there be something soon? Uh, it, it's the same answer that I provided a few questions of, uh, before. So uh, there is nothing already available uh, for uh, 
any, let's say, commercial uh, implementation or even evaluation. So uh, the ecosystem is moving, okay? That's the first step uh, with the, the release of the specification. And uh, again, let's stay tuned and you will be notified, I'm sure, if something will be uh, available down the road. Um, Apostolis is asking, uh, why isn't an RF repeater sufficient? Uh, it's, it's big, uh, I mean, I will, I will really bring here the two arguments that I mentioned before, uh, security and power consumption, okay? So we paid a lot of attention to make sure that the relay uh, responds to uh, the same standard, security standard that we offer with the Android today. And then uh, also we paid, a, I mean, during the, 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 the uh, work done by the task force into the Alliance, uh, we paid a lot of attention also to making sure that the relay will be a low power uh, solution. Okay, so uh, if a ref repeater, a uh, simple RF repeater wouldn't have been um, so good for those purposes. Um, again, uh, Apostolis, uh, slide two, why the end node opens RX1, RX1 and RX2 since it does not receive anything? Uh, Breeze, uh, I don't know if you're, if you're gonna take this. Yes, yes. Uh, the end device continues to open RX1 and RX2 because it's still a class A end device and it has to open these two slots. And it could also receive the downlink directly from a gateway because uh, even if the end device uh, send a wake-on radio frame and a lower one uplink, the lower one uplink could have been received by directly by a gateway, and the network server may want to send it directly to the end device. So that's why the end device is opening RX1 and RX2. Thanks, Breeze. Um, next one, Amadou uh, is asking, what is battery lifetime for the relay? Um, uh, it depends on the battery. So for sure, I mean, we, we Breeze showed that relay is gonna consume um, some, um, something more than a simple end node. That's, I mean, the the, the pay the price to pay for, for the implementation of this additional, of the extension of the protocol. But now it really depends on what kind of battery you wanna use. We did our estimation with this class um, uh, cell D, um, uh, D cell, sorry, battery and show, showed you that the relay can, with a reasonable let's say, number of end devices managed, the new can, can, can last for years. Okay, so uh, the trade-off is on battery. So can be years, uh, can be also months, if you are more uh, concerned about the, the size of the battery itself. Now, relay, of course, can be also plugged into a permanent power supply. Okay, this is something that uh, is an option that uh, customers and our ecosystem can also uh, pursue uh, if power consumption is not is not an issue. Uh, 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 Brice, do you want to also add something here? Yes, we can also connect the relay to a power supply and uh, choose to reduce the CAD period because by default it is one second, but it can be reduced to a very, very low value. And with a low value, the synchronization mechanism between the end device and the relay could be uh, reduced. So if you are able to uh, to add a supply to your end to your relay, your end device your end device will have a better battery life because it will send a shorter wake-on radio frame. And then Mathieu Puyo, uh, hello, is there available open code source on relay? and the uh, end device, uh, not yet, okay? Things uh, are gonna happen um, the next future, but there is no today open source code implementing the relay. Uh, the purpose of this uh, webinar was really to show you uh, and describe you um, the operation of this add-on on the, on the LoRaWAN protocol. Uh, Juan Jose uh, is asking, are end devices that use a relay defined as a new class? Uh, no. Uh, already, we already answered to this, that question, so it's not a new class, it's an add-on. Uh, it can be also on a class A uh, device. Uh, Jeff, again, uh, battery, on uh, battery on device. Clarify difference between sync and wake on radio phases. Is sync just the waiting 18 seconds and wake on radio just the actual takes power? Brice, can you take this on your side? 
So the difference between sync and wake on radio, uh, basically the sync is just a preamble uh, because if you send a four message per day or one message per hour, the sync, uh, the synchronization between your end device and your relay will not be the same. And the wake on radio uh, on the slide was just the data itself. So sync is the preamble and based on the x and error and the synchronization mechanism. Um, next one, Kazun, can relay device support multiple LoRa Mac versions for end devices? Can a device communicate with both relay and gateway or only with one? Can re okay, let's start from the first one. Uh, I don't know exactly what you mean for LoRa, multiple LoRa Mac versions for end device. Uh, for sure, a, a relay. I mean, it's, it, it has been built to be able to communicate with the end nodes and then a gateway, not at the same time, uh, but of course it will manage the two, let's say, links uh, of connectivity. If I, if I may, yeah. uh, uh, RLA will be able to work with 1.0 and what dot what end device. So that's that's what maybe maybe that's the version. Okay, good. Yeah. Can relay support class B with beacons of uh yes, I mean uh Breeze, do you wanna uh clarify here? Uh, it's not yet defined. We we only have defined uh, the relay with class E and uh, class B will need to be defined uh, in the future. Um and then how to do FUOTA with relays. Uh, this is something that I mean mm, is going to is going to happen with the the the, 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 the packets that have been specific services that have already been specified by the alliance. Okay, so I think relay will be managed as an end node, um, uh, as an end node. Okay, so I I don't think uh, there will be differences there. Brice, do you do you want to have here? Uh, no. About four, uh, no, no, it, uh, uh, it will need to be work with the photo group. Um, yeah. Jose is asking again, uh, can Relay work as an end node simultaneously? Uh, yes. It, but they yes. have to implement, they, but they have to implement two transceivers into the hardware, right? No, no, they can work, uh, they can work as a Relay uh, on background and when they want to send, uh, let's say, uh, their own frames, they can just use their link. It's possible. The relay will not be yeah, able to perform as a relay during the the application uplink, let's say, but it's possible. Okay, but uh, uh, Juan Jose is asking simultaneously, so really uh, managing the relay and the end node connectivity at the same time. For that you mean you need two transceivers, right? Mm. At the same time, is not possible even if you have two transmitters, but they can work uh, in parallel, let's say, or end to end, okay. uh, one after the other. Okay, perfect. Antoine, uh, thanks, Antoine, for for the appreciation. <laughs> is the LoRa one stack of the end device uh, different from a classic one? Uh, how can I make my end device relay ready? Thanks. Uh, I would suggest you to wait for the, I mean, either you develop your your add-on uh, based on the specification that is described in the document released by the Alliance, or you can wait the availability of a, a, an open source uh, stack, uh, uh, LoRa one stack with the Relay uh, add-on. That's my, uh, Brice, do you want to add here? No, no, that's exactly that. You can develop your own or wait for uh, the open source one. Uh, does Semtech provide ready stack for relay device development? Uh, I would say not yet. Um, and yeah, we are at the first step uh, of this uh, of this uh, new feature. Um, Marcello, how long distance can relay cover? Just near location to relay uh, is this distance that can be covered by an end node at the end. Okay, so we are we we the, one of the requirements of the relay was that. Uh, the architecture, the hardware architecture is uh, equivalent to end node. So it's really uh, uh, the distance is going to be equivalent to what uh, an end node can offer. Uh, so depends on the splitting factor uh, that uh, we use in the relay. 
now. To be honest with you, the, the most efficient way to uh, have really work will be to um, limit the SF to something like nine or eight. And that's what also uh, the, the, the splitting factor that we used for our estimation. Uh, Brice, do you want to add here something? No, that's uh, your answer perfectly. You okay. will just be limited by the default uh, spreading factor and bandwidth you're using. Yeah. Okay, really a lot of questions <laughs> popping up. I don't know if we will have the time to, to reply to everybody. Uh, if this will not be the case, so uh, yeah, we will repay privately to, uh, to, the, to the unanswered questions. Uh, so moving on, Andrea, do and devices need to be provisioned on the network server just like normal end nodes? Yes, right, Brice? They have their uh, yes. join. Yes, they need to be provided oh, like okay. uh, standard end node, but uh, you will need somehow to tell the, end, the network server that this end device is also a relay. Okay. Okay, Thomas, uh, do only a 61260 radio chip support relay, uh, not a 61270? Uh, this is, today, none of our, I mean, we don't have a protocol, there is no um, a protocol stack every, uh, implementing the relay at dawn, so, it's difficult to answer to your question. Uh, what I can say is that the day will be there. Um, for sure, at 61260, at least from our standpoint, uh, will be covered with the, our latest generation chips. Uh, that's something that uh, we will plan for, okay? Um, Jeff, on endpoints, is the idea that we will build wake on radio transmission into our devices as maybe a default mode, but then try to recognize if we are not using a relay. So we will disable that so our normal LoRa 1 process is used instead of uh, to save power. I really do not understand the question. Do you, Brice? No, uh, can... which number are you? Yeah, uh, 56, actually. 56. Uh... This is quite articulated. I'm not sure I can understand. So maybe we can take this offline. Okay. Yes. Uh, basically, there's a three mode on the on the end device for the relay feature to be enabled or not. Basically, the network server can enable it by for all the uplink, disable it, or let's say enable a smart mode where the the end device will disable. The relay, uh, the relay feature once it received a downlink directly from a gateway and enable it if it doesn't receive a downlink after, uh, let's say, X uplink. I don't know if it's answer your question, but it's the three mode we currently have defined in the relay specification. Okay, next one, 57, David is asking, do you have a side-by-side -side comparison of energy consumption of standard and node versus relay? I will say, I mean, we showed this kind of comparison in the previous slides. Uh, it depends on the scenario, but in the, with the, uh, the assumption that we made, uh, the result was maybe roughly uh, relays consume four times or three times more on the end node, right? Race in the with the assumption that we showed in the previous slides. Yes, Is that it's correct? two to four. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but it really depend depends on the scenario. Okay, how many devices and uh, 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 essentially how many devices? Um, uh, uh, what area um, range does a relay basic, basically cover? Uh, we already answered to that question, so it's the same that we could find uh, for, for an end node. It really depends on the SF that is used for the relay. Uh, next one, Samuel is asking, uh, is asking, can any node be promoted into relay by the network server or the node has to be configured as so? The node must implement the the uh, in, I would say uh, the add-on on the protocol, okay? And once it's uh, uh, it's enabled with this additional feature on the protocol and this uh, under, I would say, coverage of a relay, uh, sorry, um, yeah, sure. 
uh, sorry, I, I, I did um, I, I misunderstood the question. So the relay, the, the end node must implement the, the add-on on the relay. That's the only the only uh, uh, requirement, and then it could be provisioned as a relay to the network server. Uh, over uh, will be uh, will there be a lot of certification for relay devices? I would say yes, as a, as any of our uh, let's say. Um, Yes, it's ongoing. Feature. It's ongoing, of course. It's one of those steps uh, uh, of the plan. Uh, Franco is asking: Can be a replay also an end node? Can be a replay be also can be a replay also an end node? I would say yes. It, it, it actually appears as an end node to the to the uh, to, to the network server, right? Chris? Yes. 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 Uh, Oscar. Uh, asking, will it be possible to deploy a relay on an existing network without having to configure the end devices already deployed? I would say no. Uh, end devices must be, uh, uh, I would say, upgraded with the, uh, the add-on on the LoRaWAN protocol, but also network server must implement the, the additional feature. Do you want to add uh, some, something, Chris? No, that's exactly that. Okay, perfect. Antoine, again, one more question. Uh, how can I run, I, can I turn one of my LoRa devices into a relay? In other words, is there any way to test the, that feature? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think we already answered uh, about the need to upgrade the device uh, firmware with the, the, the add-on on the LoRa One protocol, and then how to test, it's really a matter of uh, uh, the LoRa Alliance building the, the certification plan, okay? Um, so the, 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 the manufacturer can uh, can ensure you or uh, that the real implementation is uh, is is uh, is uh, compliant with our specification. That's the the, the, the way I would go. Uh, how is the real end device paired with a relay? Uh, I think this is this has been already answered during the the presentation. Grace, do you want to add something here? Uh, no. No, no, so that's okay for me. Uh, it, it's really a, a, a join, let's say, a, a join uh, action uh, like the one that we are, we are familiar for the, for, for, for the end nodes. Uh, Arnaud asking if Relay can work as an end node too, could all sensors in a deployment be configured as a Relay as well? I would say yes. Uh, what do you think? Uh, yeah. Yes, it's possible, but it may not be a good idea because the relay feature yeah. takes quite a toll on the battery. Yeah, so oh, I would yeah, that's good. Yes, but I we, we don't I mean we, we don't foresee the, the utility of that. Um, Mark asking, what is the impact to the network server in general? Uh, Honestly, it's difficult for me to answer because since I don't have a, a lot of experience on network server, but we may we may reply to you. Um, privately, uh, Brice, do you want to add here? Oh, I don't have any experience in network server development, so I will uh, pass the question. Yeah. Okay. So let's take this for a for a, a, a offline response. Um, Prasad asking any suggestion on how the relay are to be seen from an ITOT perspective, account accounting the automation. And uh, project type set up for industrial setting. I, I mean, the answer that I can provide here it's uh, that the relay will appear as an end node at the end. So there is nothing else than uh, um, I would say would really differentiate from a, a, this upper layer of the of the of the network. What do you think, Brice? Yes, the, the, at the end, the relay is an end node that just uh, nice. forward frame on a dedicated F port. So, oh, it's an end node. Perfect. Okay, Jeff, uh, uh, thanks for the appreciation, Jeff. <laughs> uh, and I think we are, we are done. Uh, Megan, every, all the questions except a couple of them, uh, we will uh, replay privately. Uh, been answered. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Carlo. Thank you, Brees. Um, we had quite a few questions there, so I appreciate you getting through all of them right at the hour here. 
Um, any questions that we didn't answer on the webinar, we will try to follow up via email. Um, please just be patient with us as we did have lots and lots over 60 questions on this webinar. So thank you again to Carlo and Brees. Please join us for our next webinar on October 27th. Um, it will be another technical webinar and you can find out all the information at laura-alliance.org. So thanks everyone. We're gonna go ahead and end the webinar now and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.